Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Indie Investor Pod. I got Courtney Wheeler joining me here today. I'm excited to have him on here because, uh, you know, we had Stacy Patlin, his partner, on here. Um, it's been about two weeks ago now, and we got to hear a little bit about how she got into it and everything she's doing in real estate and their new build and working with contractors and flips and stuff like that. And then we get to meet the man behind all that today of uh, the person that got <laughs> Stacy motivated, this person that keeps Stacy motivated in that. Um, Courtney, how's it going today, man? Hey, how you doing, Brian? Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem at all. No problem at all. You got, you got a lot to live up to. Stacy had a good episode. So, you know, you got oh, to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm usually not not in the light. So yeah, um, I do. She did a great job and you did, guys did a great job. So that was a good deal. Yeah. So awesome. Well, I want to start with you. I know Stacy, we were talking about the new build that you guys did. Um, and then she was talking about how when we did her episode, it was, you know, getting ready to sell. So number one, I got that. Did the, did the new build sell? Did you guys get that in, off your plate and uh, new homeowners in there and everything like that? Yeah, we, we actually did. We actually closed on it Monday. Nice. Um, yep. So we closed on it Monday and finally got that off our plate. Awesome. Awesome. And then uh, I know we were kind of talking a little bit before and I was talking about this with Stacy too. You guys to be able to make sure it closed on time and everything like that. You guys had a little bit of creativity along with kind of how you set up that deal to make sure it closed on time and stuff. Correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we, 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 uh, the buyers were willing to, um, allow us to put some money in escrow. We had a few more punch out inspection, punch out repairs to be made. And um, we didn't meet the deadline to get it closed up. So we got kind of creative and uh, the buyers allowed us to put some money back in escrow and allowed us five extra days to uh, make the repairs. So today we were making our last repair. Um, we didn't quite reach, reach the five day mark. Uh, we got done a couple of days early, but yeah, that, that was a good deal and allowed us to stay on schedule to, to make the closing happen and, and not push that back. Yeah, I think that's so important. It's something that, uh, so I wanted to do you to share that a little bit because I think that's a big thing of when, you know, all of us investors are looking to get things done and we have to get timelines done and, you know, we get those final punch items and things like that. But then it's sometimes there's, there's little things that pop up and stuff there. So how can you get creative? And I love that within this business too, that you're able to get creative with right. something like that of being able to, Hey, let's, we want to get you guys in this home. There's little things we'll get it done this week. We'll just pull some mounting back in escrow. If they don't get done, you get the money. If, if, if we will get them done, we have five days and stuff. So I applaud you guys on being able to get that done and being able to do and just be creative with that. And then congratulations on getting your Thanks. first new build sold too. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that, it was a, it most definitely was a journey. Um, but you know, um, it was a good journey, you know, going through it, it wasn't, a lot of frustration, a lot of tears, a lot of blood, sweat. Um, but it was a journey that I would most definitely do again. Um, obviously, you know, we feel that we're better now. So um, I think the next process would be much more smooth. But, you know, the education in it was just, you know, just just awesome. So it was a good thing. What's that, uh, what's that one thing that you learned from this project that when you say, Hey, you're, you want to do it again, you're going to do it again. I know you'll probably have a property, you know, or a lot next week, ready to, <laughs> to get a new bill going, knowing you, but what's that one thing that you maybe that happened on this first one that, you know, Hey, we're not going to allow this to happen again on this, uh, on the second or third or fourth one. Um, I mean, I think the permit process is one of the biggest things. I know Stacy touched on, um, the, uh, you know, we try to, be smarter than the system and, and, and use an expediting company. Um, and, you know, I, there, there's some good expediting companies out there and um, most definitely serve their purpose. But for us, you know, we're so hands on with everything, you know, with our projects. Um, we just know the process of the permits now. So we kind of know the, uh, the timeline of what it would take us to get these permits pulled. And, and more, more importantly, what we need to submit in order to get the permits passed. So the permit process is probably one of the things that we would most definitely tighten up on and we learned a whole bunch on. Um, and then, you know, just the actual foundation part of the project. I mean, we, we're already into these older houses rehabbing them. So we have a, a good uh, sense of mind on, you know, framing and, and, and the mechanicals and things like that, but building a new foundation for a house and then, framing up a brand new house was, was a new learning experience for us. Um, so those, those areas are kind of the areas that will, you know, most definitely tighten up on the next one. 
Yeah. No, awesome stuff, man. I think that's, uh, you know, talking to, you know, a handful of people that are doing these new builds and everything now, that tends to always be that one thing of like, okay, we got to pull with the permits and we're going to be able to do this and we'll be able to, you know, here's my timeline. And let's say a timeline is, you know, two months to you're like, you know, you start like putting up the walls and things like that. Like it's just, just go ahead and factor and it's probably going to be three or three yeah, and a half or something like that. Sure, so kind sure. of always take that and multiply it by 50% or something. That seems kind of about the timeline of what people are getting in here at. So, um, but no, man, I'm excited for you guys and excited for what you guys are able to do. Um, I know as, as, as telling Stacey, I love your guys' just projects in general of, you know, I always like to see like, okay, what, what color door are they going to paint on their necks? What's it going to be? Is it going to be purple or yellow or teal or whatever? And now that you guys have some new builds in the mix too, it's going to be exciting to see kind of what designs you guys go with. So yeah, yeah. awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. So Stacey, or I'm sorry, Courtney, I want to go back a little bit on kind of with you talking about it with Stacey. Uh, so you got her involved in this. You guys just finished a new build. You got like five projects going on. You got, you know, you've been doing all these different flips. You guys have learned from Dave. You guys have done a little bit of everything. Sure. Um, you got some, you know, you got the front porch brokerage stuff going on where she's selling, you know, selling some houses, doing some listings, things like that. You guys have done some wholesaling. So you yeah. guys have done a little bit of everything. And that's why I love talking to you guys and appreciate you guys so much. I want to go back before that. So Courtney, we know that you got Stacy involved. How did that all come about? Where did you guys kind of get that itch for like, Hey man, I want to, I want to get into real estate. This is going to be my Avenue. And then I know you're an education guy too. You just, you, yeah. you, you bought courses, you've done courses, yeah. you've listened to stuff and you, you'd like to just take it in, but how did that all get started and where did you get that itch for it? Um, I, I actually was, uh, introduced to real estate from one of my a good friends of mine. Um, he had came across a, a, a Dan Murrow um, ad years ago, and it was one of those free courses that they were handing out. And uh, he invited me to it. And, um, you know, we went to it. And of course, they it was an upsell thing and they wanted you to start spending money. And at that point, you know, I wasn't in a position to do it. I was out. I was all the way out of it. So he continued on. He tried to raise money to get here. He stayed persistent and consistent in his uh, real estate journey. And uh, he actually started wholesaling. And um, when he did that, he had he had done a deal. And he came to my house and he was like, you sure you don't want in? You know, and showed me this check. And I'm like, man, that, that look, that's a nice looking check, you know, for doing what you did. And it worked. So, you know, we, uh, you know, from there, I was like, yeah, let me get in. But when I got into the education of it, I was just so intrigued by the process and, and, and the vast, uh, opportunities there was available in real estate um and from there we we end up joining saria um this is when it was a much more smaller organization um than it is today and you know i was just intrigued by just you know the people that were involved in real estate and what you can do uh and i just i just kept chugging along kept chugging along but i still was straddling the fence i was driving semis at the time um okay you know, uh, around the Midwest, all around the Midwest. And, uh, you know, I actually owe a lot to a guy named Sean Hoseppel. Um, yeah. He uh, he overheard me talking one day and then he just said, hey man, you gotta stop straddling the fence. Um, and from there, that just, that stuck with me. And, you know, along the way, I, I ended up meeting a lot of great, you know, investors, um, you know, and, you know, that were, that were very influential to me. and. Uh, just got tapped in and, and one day I just made, made the decision like, you know, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to just quit this. And then, you know, I had a, some savings put up and it was a thing where I was like, you know, if it don't work, I'll just, you know, at least I got a CDL, I'll find a job. I mean, that's always able to find a job in that field. Um, and, you know, it, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. It, it wasn't peaches and cream in the beginning, yeah. you know, um, but it, it Ended up working out. It ended up working out for me. And, um, you know, I started wholesaling and I, I love wholesaling. I love the, the, the game of wholesaling. And the biggest thing for me is what I struggled with in wholesaling was evaluating the properties for rehabs. Cause I had this big buyers list and, you know, they're like, you got some good properties, but I don't think your numbers are all the way right. Yeah. You know? So I end up saying, okay, you know, Dave, I went to a lot of Dave courses and I was just, man, dude, I was just like, this guy is amazing. Yeah. You know, this is this the way he thinks, the way he comes up, this creativity. Um, and I just was like, 
you know, maybe I need to take a, a flip course in order to learn how to evaluate these properties and did that and end up flipping full time and never got back around to the wholesale like I wanted to, but it, it panned out, it panned out. Um, so that, that's just kind of, you know, a brief, you know, uh, description of how I got here. Um, and then along the way, like I said, you know, Stacy, she was working and I was like, I need some help. I, you know, I can't do this myself. And, you know, we didn't start a family, you know, we got a son and whatnot. So I'm like, just quit your job. You know, let's, let's, uh, I'm sure I could find something for you to do. And I mean, it was, it was days and days that we were just sitting in the office, just looking for something to do. I mean, we wasn't doing nothing that was, that, <laughs> that made any sense, you know, but, um, you know, it, it panned out. We stayed down, we stayed down with it and it panned out for us. Yeah, no, I, th I think that's so cool of just uh, so many things you just, <laughs> that I want to dig into what you just said right there, man. <laughs> awesome stuff. One of those things too, is just, it's, I always, one of the things I always hear a lot of investors, you know, get into and, and they'll say is like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and quit my job and just jump in right away. Like, that's awesome. One of my fears for them always is like, man, do you have a backup plan? Do you know, like sometimes it's, it's nice to jump off that ledge and maybe not even have that backup plan, but like you had right. your, you, know, you knew you could go back to truck driving, you know, Stacy could go back to nursing with me right. too. I was like, I can, I could back to see actually my teaching license like just expired. And I had that thought of like, Oh man, do I want to go ahead and renew it? Do I want to take some classes and renew it just in case? But I'm like, ah, okay, this is, this is my path this is where I need to be. Um, right. But having those backup plans are nice. But that other part of that is like, man, that just that education that you wanted to just receive and that you just wanted to jump into, I think is, is awesome. So, you know, you did some courses and you did some things like that, but also just making the connections and learning yeah. from people like Sean Holsapple is just an amazing yeah. guy. Um, who wants to, you know, just feed back into people. And then Dave, you know, just like same thing where he's, he's right. put on a meetup and he's doing this stuff and teaching people how to do things the right way. Um, so connecting yourself with the right people and, and doing those things is, is awesome. But then also being receptive to all that stuff as well. Um, I yes. think that's one of my favorite things talking to you and talking to Stacy both of you guys aren't afraid, afraid to admit like, oh yeah, we made a mistake here. We did this wrong or we do, the, yeah. <laughs> we do this yeah. again. But it's all yeah. about doing it from an educational standpoint of like, hey, this is, we're going to learn from this and we're going to take this and things. So that's Absolutely. awesome. Man. So Absolutely. one of those things that I want to like talk about a little bit is, is going from, you know, I know you guys kind of did, you, Dave kind of helped you guys out with your first flip, kind of giving you guys some advice and, and kind of taking you through that thing. And then all of a sudden, you're the point that wasn't, and that wasn't too long ago. That was like two, three years ago. Now you're yeah. the point where you guys are like, you know, you got five projects going on at one time. Yeah. So how do you go from kind of that mindset of like, okay, we're going to focus on one at a time. And then I'm going to do, you know, I got five projects going on there now. How do you kind of keep all that straight? How do you, how do you scale that and get to that point a little bit? Well, you know, I've, 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 uh, I've always thought big in, um, in any business that I've done, because I've, I've owned uh, a few other businesses outside of real estate. I had a restaurant. Um, I just always had a, you know, entrepreneurial mindset that my father passed along to me. Yeah. Um, so I've always thought value. And, um, you know, with with real estate and picking up these new projects, um, again, you know, I took a lot of educational courses and I was, I was most definitely blessed to be, um, you know, in a, in a great network, in a great network around guys that's been doing it for years. Um, and, you know, watching them do what they do and then kind of still in my business based on what I see them doing. And just asking a lot of questions, asking a lot of questions, um, getting a lot of answers, getting a lot of feedback. But the main thing would be, you know, I learned is putting systems in place. Yeah. So, you know, we needed to, um, you know, it, it was a point where I felt like, you know, I could do this all myself and, and that's just not, 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 <laughs> not saying. So, yeah. you know, what we started doing is we start, you know, dividing between me and Stacey, we started dividing, you know, what our responsibilities was amongst ourselves first. Um, you know, I handled the day-to-day -day, uh, contractors um, in the field with them. And Stacy, like she said, she handles the design, um, ordering all the materials and things like that. And then from there, it was other things that we had to get off our plate, like bookkeeping. Um, so we had to put, you know, a CPA in place and then, um, you know, get that task because that's an all-day task if, you know, if you're, not, if you're not careful. Yeah. Um, and then just keeping that stuff in order. But we along the way, and we're still doing it as I, as, as I speak, we're building systems, you know, we correct them, 
Um, some of the some of the systems might not be just the right way for us, but we we edit and correct them and, and make them work for us so that we're able to um, stay on top of these projects and stay in front of these projects. Um, because I mean, we still we still have you know issues in terms of. Um, my goal is I want somebody at a project every day. I want somebody at one project. I want to see some type of progress, but we go a couple of days sometimes without it because I mean, it's, it's either a contract issue um, with scheduling or, or what have you. But, um, you know, as we're growing, we're trying to build our team to, you know, stop these mistakes from happening or whatnot. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's, I mean, I love that. I like how you threw that in there. It's like, cause that's what it's all about putting those processes and systems in place because it all sounds simple and it all sounds like, Oh, okay. You know, you and you and Stacy are together all the time anyway. Like it's, it's, it makes yeah. sense. They're like, Oh, we'll get it covered. But you actually have to be like, okay, here are Courtney's responsibilities. Here's what he's in charge of. Here is what Stacy's in charge of and doing this. Here's what the CPA is in charge of. Here's what the project manager, if we have one of those, here's what they're in charge of. But by yeah. putting those things in there, because you know, you even just mentioned it of like, sometimes we go, you know, two days with where somebody's not on a project. Well, that can happen, but who's responsible for it? Okay. When are they getting back out there? Who, you know, who's doing that? And it's really easy to, I um, mean, just kind of be like, oh, well, okay, she can take care of it. I'll take care of it tomorrow. And you, you but you have to have those systems and processes in place. And that's how you sure those things up. Sure. Then one of those things too, is what you just mentioned too. It's, it's, it's always changing. You can always improve it. You can always look to do exactly. other things. So just cause you come up with a system or a process doesn't mean it's set in stone. So being able to do whatever you can to, uh, to change those things. So now Courtney, I know one of the things that, um, a lot of people always struggle with investors in general. Um, I think this is like a common theme when you talk to investors, like, ah, oh, you know, it's going pretty well, but I'm having an issue here or I'm having a trouble here. And one of the things that always pops up is, is working with contractors and dealing with yeah. contractors and things. And we got some amazing contractors here in Indianapolis. And we got some yes. people that are doing some amazing work. Yes. Um, but when you're working with contractors, whether it is an actual physical person nail or, you know, swinging a hammer contractor or just a contractor, it's a third party that you've hired, you know, that type of contractor, things like that. That's what they are. They're contractors. They don't work for you. They're working for, you know, they're working on their own and it's kind of a third level or a third party thing and stuff like that. So right. it's always interesting dealing with contractors. What are some things or what are some tips you have for people out there that are kind of maybe going through that of like, Hey, I'm putting these contractors in place and oh, this one's been okay, but you know, I have to, I have to let this one go. Or what are some things that you've done to develop your relationships with contractors and being able to get the most out of them? And I know one of your big things is too, is motivating them and like staying on top right. of them, but also doing it in a good way. So what are some tips for you have for that? Yeah, so good question, good question. So, you know, and and all of this uh is uh comes from just years of of being in it and being um very hands-on. So, you know, one of my, my biggest things is you know, when you when you do bring a new contractor on and you're vetting new contractors, um, more importantly, I like to do a little bit of research first, um, in terms of for me, I like to do some background checks. Um you know, just to see if they have any kind of, uh, you know, civil suits against them or things like that. Um, and then more importantly, I want to see their work and I don't want to, I necessarily don't want to see pictures. I want to actually be able to go to a site and see what type of work they're doing. Um, and then get an idea of what they can do because we ran across a lot of contractors who said they could do stuff and it's just not the case. They really can't. I mean, you'll be surprised how many people say they can do stuff and really can't. And then you get yourself in another world of trouble. Um, I want to check their references, you know, and, and, and follow up and, and ask uh, previous people they were for how they were, um, did, you know, things like that, just a list of questions. Um, and then from there, you know, what, I, what I've learned is, you know, you can't always use the cheap contractor. Cheap contractors always come back around and it costs you more. And I struggled with that for years. And, uh, you know, so, you know, we don't mind paying a little bit extra now to uh, get the job done right um, in a professional manner. And, um, you know, without babysitting, because a, a lot of these cheap guys, you gotta, they need a lot of attention. You need to be there. Um, so, you know, th those are probably your top tips that I would have for, for a contract, you know, for, a, new investors or any investor when it comes to dealing with contractors. And then, you know, for me, you know, I like to be on site and, um, 
you know, just just let them know that I'm not, you know, a standoff guy or nothing like that. Um, I'm human like them. And, and the goal is the same for everybody. You know, I, I want you to make some money. And obviously, I want to make some money. But, you know, when we come up with these budgets, we tend to, um, you know, try to move. So when we, as investors, when we come up with budgets and our number doesn't match their number, you know, that's, that's, that can become an unmotivating factor there, yep. you know, yeah, yeah. Um, because, you know, if we, if we have something in budget and we want to spend 2,500 and they want 4,000 and we're like, well, we can't pay that. Cause that's going to be 1500 that we got to take from somewhere else. And then they like, well, I'm not motivated to work. So, you know, you, you gotta be very, very careful in that. And, and that comes along with experience or whatnot, but um, yeah, just the, the two top ones would be doing your research on who that contractor is. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say that's, that's, that's huge. You can always be weary of the guy too, that uh, says, Oh, I can do it cheaper than this guy or the guy that says, Oh yeah, I can do everything. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure jack you're doing your trades, research. No. Yeah. yeah. No, no jack all trades. They <laughs> master of none. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I know one of the things we were talking about too, uh, you kind of before the show even happened of like, you were, you were telling me how, man, you don't, like you like to be on these sites and you like checking out the jobs and, and checking in on the crews and things like that. One thing is you, you mentioned to me, and I think it's really important too, is that you're not afraid to get dirty. Now you're not doing the projects, but if something needs cleaned up or something needs, you know, they need a little help carrying something in, like you'll, you'll jump in and help out and stuff like that. But then the other thing too, is that you said that you like to keep them, you like to keep them motivated. You like to kind of keep okay. them, you know, kind of rally the troops and kind of do this thing. So what do you think that means for, you know, to that contractor? And as you've seen over the last couple of years of, of just that relationship building of, Hey, I'm going to be on site, not to just really check up on things. I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to be here to say like, Hey, how's it going? Like what's, what's going on? Or, Hey, do you need help with this? Or can I do that? You know, what does it mean for, how does that help you, I guess, develop relationships with contractors by kind of being that guy of like, Hey, let me help you out a little bit. Or, Hey, let me, let me, you know, I'm going to give you a pep talk if I need to, but I'm not just here to, oversee you or just like kind of watch to watch to see what's what's doing but i'm also going to be here to just like be invested in this project and be invested in the contractors too yeah so um you know one of my things one of my biggest things is i try to create a team atmosphere um when i come around you know i don't want no one to start working harder because they see the boss you know i, I don't, when people call me boss or anything like that i always defer that off i don't you know i'm a team member just like you we're, we're all trying to reach one goal and that's very important to me um because you know just working in the you know the work field and uh just working for years um you know people you know some uh, hvac contractor said this to me one day and it stuck with me he said courtney um your dream is other people's nightmare, you know, and, and, and that stuck with me because, you know, I have this big dream of, of blowing this, this real estate company up and, you know, the person that's working for me might be dreading every day, you know, of working for me. And, and, and for me, you know, I'm not going to help everyone with this, but it's very important that I want people to like what they do, you know? So, when I come around, you know, I will get dirty and, and pick up some trash and carry some material in or take some material away. Now, I'm trying to get away from that because yeah. then it's making me less effective in other areas. But, you know, I like to show them that, you know, I'm not this uh, rich guy who's just making money off of their services. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, and, and the other part of that is, you know, for me, one of my models is by any means necessary, right? So I'm trying to get this project done, you know? So if I have to, if that requires me to take a couple of things back to Home Depot or to the hardware stores, then so be it, you know? Um, because obviously I don't want to pay someone who's making $30, $40 an hour to make that run. <laughs> right. right. So it's, it's, it's all about logic. So it's, it kind of, it kind of helps me and it hurts me. And, um, but it is what it is. So I'm just, I'm just doing whatever it takes. I mean, I'm, I'm like that. If we went to a, a meeting together, you know, if, if we need help to break down the chairs and tables, um, that's kind of what it is. I'm, I'm there to help. So um, not perfect by any means, but you know, I try to play my part. 
Yeah. No, I think that's really important of just kind of being that person that is, is known as a helper, but also, you know, there to, you know, okay, I'm not just the boss man, but I can, you know, I can jump in if I need it, but yeah, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to hold you accountable too. So. Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Love those things. So um, I know we kind of, we were talking before too, just about, um, so before you guys had like kind of an in-house, you know, contractor doing some stuff for you and, and things like that. Um, and then you're kind of in that in-between phase now of like, okay, we don't really have anybody in house, but maybe we need just a project manager. Is it like a full-time project manager for us? Or is it like, Hey, do we get, do we go with a third party? I know you're kind of, you're in between that phase right now, but I just want to kind of take it through that mindset of like, kind of what are you looking for? And like, what's important for you guys as you're kind of going through that? Or like, what are some things you're considering as you're going through that decision of like, Hey, do we bring somebody in house to this for this? Or can we get by a third or with a third party or, do we need to be able to do like two more houses than it would right. get up to seven? Like what's your mindset with that kind of stuff? So that, and that's a great question, Ryan. Um, not, not to put you on the spot here, Courtney. But. <laughs> no, no, I, I heard you and Stacy, you know, I kind of recalled something between you and Stacy's conversation. And uh, she had mentioned about how we don't like to, or we prefer not to work with GCs. And again, there are great GCs out. I mean, we're friends with a lot of, you know, great GCs, but, um, you know, we struggle with the uh, cost plus only because we know the industry so well. Yep. But again, you know, and I like to, when I say that, um, you know, plan, paying cost plus saves you time. And if you're trying to do volume, that works for you. Mm -hmm. And it does with us. But I think our approach is we did, you know, we did have, you know, an in-house labor guy that was great. You know, he was doing, he, he could do everything, literally. Um, but, you know, as we grew and got more projects and more volume, you know, he's only one guy. So we needed to be, bring more people on, but then we kind of converted to, well, I actually need somebody between me and the subs. In order for our business to grow, I need a person that, that has the ability to manage the project and then also build the team at the same time. So right now, currently, we're looking for, you know, to to put a project manager in place um, that, you know, would, would basically report to me and me and him will work together essentially. Uh, but, um, you know, he can manage the project, he or she can manage the projects and uh, that would allow me to, you know, grow the business on the other end uh, and then put the systems in place for them, you know, to continue to, to go. So, um, you know, whether that be in-house people or that be subs, you know, um, you know, we did lose our in-house guys. So now we're using a lot of subs and that was a very challenging thing um, because uh, we were so used to paying X price, you know, and then using the sub, the price was, you know, significant a bit more. So I struggled with that forever, you know, and I got kind of caught up, but now I'm more comfortable because I know some of the, you know, I know the going rate for this, the going rates for that. So, um, you know, it, it's just, it's just, it's a situational thing, you know, it's a situational yeah. thing for sure. But um, we're, uh, we're, we're actually in the process of interviewing a few guys to, you know, manage the projects. Cause we, you know, our, our goal is to do, you know, 20 to 25 a year uh, nice. on a flip level. And then this would also allow me to, uh, get into the wholesaling space a little bit, not to steal none of you guys deals or anything. Like <laughs> ah, we, we love working with you, Courtney. So yeah, no worries. Yeah. yeah. We, and we love you guys, man. We, uh, man, you guys are awesome, man. Um, you know, I talk to Ronnie all the time and, uh, you know, I, I watched Brett, you know, take this le business to a whole nother level. And then I saw when you came in and it was just, man, it was, you guys are, you, you guys are a model company, to be honest. And uh, we, we love working with you. We love talking to you guys every opportunity we get. So, and we learn a lot from you guys as well. So oh, man, appreciate that. So appreciate you and appreciate that. So um, one more thing before I get you out of here, man, I want to know is I want to go back to when you're talking, when you were working as a wholesaler and one of the things you said you struggled with was being able to understand the rehab cost on things and just kind of be right. able to get your numbers right, right. for, and I think that's so very important too for those investors out there of whether you are a buy and hold investor, whether you're flipping, whether you're wholesaling, no matter what you're doing, that's always the trickiest part of understanding, making sure your numbers are on point, making sure your, your numbers are accurate. So you can, you know, use those numbers to drive your decisions. 
that's the biggest thing. So what's some advice you have for those people out there that are kind of in that phase right now? Like, man, I just, I just need to get better at running my rehab numbers. I just need to get better at running my comps. What's some advice you have for somebody out there that's kind of in that spot of like, how do I get better at running my numbers? What would you suggest to them? Well, you know, and as I think of that, as I think of that, and, I, and then I watch, you know, uh, companies like yours, uh, you know, and, and some of the other bigger companies, um, I don't necessarily know if, 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 if rehab numbers are so important. Um, you know, if you, if you're in a ballpark, then yes. Um, they, they are very important, but I'm, I'm saying, I don't know if you have to be as accurate as I thought I had to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think if you're in that ballpark and then you leave yourself enough room for negotiation and things like that. But if, a, if a person did want to get better in that field, what I would suggest, and this is something that I do in the flip business all the time now is, you know, as I'm riding around every day, I'm, I'm pulling up on, on work sites that, you know, people I see jobs and I just go in and I look and I get their number. Um, and then I ask them, you know, you know, how much do you charge for, for flooring a square foot? Um, how much do you charge for baseboards or quarter round per linear foot? And then what I do is I start building this list, um, in my software or even on paper to, uh, have a mindset of, and just kind of know what these numbers are at. So like now, even in my flip business, I want three quotes every time I want three quotes. And if I see that these three quotes are relevant to each other, then I know that's, that's probably the going right out here for that. You know, now if they're significantly off, then I'm doing a little bit more research and like this guy was just trying to get me cause he knew I was kind of green or naive. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's important to, to, to familiarize yourself with the going rates. Um, yeah. You know, if you can, if you can, because I don't know how much time that would take up for you. But if you can, you really kind of want to know and then store away, not just know, because you can know something and then forget it, you know, two weeks later, just with all the stuff that's going on. You have to write it down. You have to put it somewhere and you have to have um, a point of reference to where, you know, because numbers are going to change. This industry, we, we've seen it. We had a lumber or a material increase that killed everybody, you know, and it was a thing where how do we adjust and it's frustrating, but you just got to be stay relevant with, with what costs are. So um, writing it down is huge. And, uh, you know, that would be one of my biggest tips or biggest, you know, things I would have to say about that. Yeah, no, I think it's huge. And I love the fact that you threw that in there of like, Hey, do rehab numbers have to meet need to be as accurate as what we thought? I'll tell you what, that's been a change of I feel like the last three years, which I'm actually happy about that change because it means a lot more of our buyers I feel like are doing know the know how to do due diligence and they're doing that due diligence and not just relying on like wholesalers numbers and things. So right, right, I feel right. like three years ago they were like a lot of buyers would take your numbers and be like, Hey, I'm gonna go buy Courtney's numbers, or I'm gonna take Brian's <laughs> numbers, I'm gonna go buy these. Now it's like I know we've been preaching a lot. Don't listen to my, don't listen to what exactly. Brian said. Yeah. Like, go do your own thing. To use it as a reference, but go out and do your own thing. So, right. So, right. No, right. I'm excited that we're all seeing that kind of across the board of uh, yeah. everybody's getting a little bit better at that of their numbers and doing their due diligence and things like that. So yes, sir. Yeah. Awesome stuff, Courtney, man. Really appreciate you. Any last little uh, just tidbits or advice or uh, just anything you want to throw in here, but we uh, wrap up the show. Yeah. 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 Thanks again. Thanks for having me, man. Just it's, it's an honor to, to, to be able to uh, do this and thanks for the invite. Um, very appreciative of that. Um, but you know, to any new inspiring investors, I get a lot of calls, a lot of emails, a lot of messages, a lot of in-person, uh, you know, what do I got to do to, to uh, get into real estate? Cause you teach me. And, and, and just to be quite frank, you know, I, I don't have a lot of time. I don't even have a lot of time to do my own stuff, yeah. but you know, what, what helped me out and what I tell everybody is, you know, join some type of RIA meetup. Um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm going to be, I'm an advocate of, of Syria. Um, help me out tremendously. So, you know, if you, if you could get signed up and, and become a part of, of that network, I mean, the, the, the opportunities are endless there. So, um, I know you guys have a great meetup if you wanted to get into wholesaling. So just, you got to get a part of, uh, some type of RIA meetup and, you know, go from there. And then the network that that's what helped me out tremendously. My, my network, 
helped me out tremendously. I couldn't do this by myself, um, but the people who I met along the way, you know, I owe that all to them. So everybody, anybody who I didn't mention, you know, on this podcast, uh, you know, thank you so much. And uh, that's what I would give to any aspiring investor who want to get into the game. Love it, man. Love it. Love your heart. Love, uh, just appreciate you and, uh, and all the things you guys are doing here in Indianapolis, making Thank this you. city a better place and just uh, being there. You are one of those resources now that people can go to as well. When people yes, are at Syria or people are networking is definitely seek out Courtney and Stacy is just everything they're doing. Um, they're a wealth of knowledge and just have an amazing heart to get their go givers as well. So yep. awesome stuff. Appreciate you guys. Yep. And uh, Courtney, if somebody wanted to reach out to you or just uh, find out more information about what you guys are doing, or they just wanted to connect with you in some way, how do they get in touch with you, man? Yeah. So, you know, my email is Courtney at ND properties or us. And that's uh, ND properties, the letter R U S.com. So ND properties or us.com. And um, I'm also on Facebook. My name is Courtney Wheeler. So just get a hold of me through a messenger or email and uh, we can go from there. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. And if you need anything from me or anything from our team, um, you can reach out to me at brian at simplewholesaling.com. More than happy to help anybody out. And with that, that's a wrap for this episode of the Indie Investor Pod. And we'll see you guys next time. Take care.